So the problem is sometimes our box is buried very, very far into the wall and we go to install our plug, but there's a huge gap. Like it would be something like this, right? So there's really two things we need to do. Number one, we need to have some type of spacer and that's like where this would come into play. But then you would also need to have an oopsie, <laughs> what I call a box insert. And that would allow, you know, cause you're not allowed to have your live wire sticking outside of the box. Um, so you'd need to have a box insert and then you could also use these as a spacer, okay? Before we get into this video again, don't forget to check out my free book for apprentice electricians by going to becomingelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. Okay, so I'll first share how to make these and I wanna give a huge shout to Rob, all right? He was someone I learned this from. He was probably like the master finisher that, of, you know, when I was on job sites, he was super good at finishing, knew all the little tricks and uh, I always liked learning so I'd always ask questions and I'd, I'd watch. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And you wanna use a 14 gauge wire. Uh, bigger gauge wire doesn't twist as well. And this is the trick. So you just wanna take a piece of wire. You wanna make sure that you are using a drill, not an impact. And the reason is because you can see it has these little holes in there. All you do is you simply watch this. Slides right in, right in there like that. And then what you do is you just pull the trigger. Okay, so this is, so this is it. I'm gonna make it right now. Okay, and so when I'm doing this, I'm just trying to line it up at the very bottom. Okay. And uh, the longer you make the wire, so as you can see, that was very short. So that's why you wanna have quite a long piece of wire and you can make it all the way to the length of this. I'll just undo my drill bit and uh, we can pull this off. Okay, and so there, that's what you're left with. And now let me just share how to use it. All right, so again, the first thing to say is if you are gonna do that, I would recommend getting a much longer piece of wire. And then that way you have a much longer uh, spacer to work with uh, because you're gonna be going through these a lot in the finishing stage when boxes are behind the walls or even if it's just, even just a little bit behind the wall, you don't have to use such a big spacer. And so again, make it a little bit longer and then you can put it in that carry-all case. And I'm telling you, having a bunch of these with you it will allow you to get boxes looking really, really, or plugs looking really good. So here is how you use them, okay? Let's just say we have a little gap. Like let's just say, you know, uh, it's like this big of a gap. Now there's two things you might have to do. Number one, you might have to change out the, um, the screw that it comes with for a longer one. And um, then what you do is, in this case, let's say it was just this long. So what I would do is you kind of measure Right? You put like the plug there and you're just kind of like, okay, I need it this long, let's just say. So you kind of put like your thumb there. I usually found that you want to go about one or two bigger than what you think because you can always screw it down a little harder and it will um, squish in and it'll give a really tight hold. So all you do is you simply just do this. Take, I, always, I always like my side cutters for this. I'll hold these. Okay, so I'll put that one to the side. And then now, in this case, as you can see, this one is too small for this screw. So I would need a different screw. Um, and I'll share a cool little trick to pull this out. Usually you wanna use your strippers for this, but you can uh, just use your side cutters if I can grab it. And this is like the easiest way to pull screws out, okay? So watch this. That's how easy it is. So rather than having to get like a flat head or I don't know, what, however you're gonna try to pull it out, usually your strippers are best. And I got away with it with the side cutters there. But yeah, you just take that in there and you just pull it out and then, then you can use your um, long screw. Uh, you don't have to have this. The whole purpose of these is so that the screw doesn't fall out. And sometimes um, they have like little like metal strips in there to help the screw stay in there. Those are sometimes pretty useful. But uh, again, uh, that's, that's just so that the screw doesn't fall out. Uh, let's just use this bottom one now as an example. So let's just see, is this one long enough? Nope, okay. So again, same thing. All I would do here is just take the side cutters. It's easier on the hands. I'm not, I'm not cutting, I'm just very, very gentle. So I can untwist this because when the, um, when the wire is so small, uh, it's very hard on your fingers and your hands. And let's just say we just need a little spacer, just like this, okay? Just like this, that's all we need. Uh, you can see we can put it over that. There you go, there is a spacer. And then if we wanted to screw the box in, um, it would just give us a little bit of space, all right? And sorry, I don't have a box insert on me at the moment to share with that with you, uh, but you would put a box insert if it's too, um, too much of a gap. 
there's a code rule for like how big of a gap you're actually allowed to have. And then, uh, yeah, then you just screw it in just like that. So after you have wired your plug, again, never use the, the quick connects. Um, it's horrible for maintenance. Always make your hooks, all right? And then I used to always like to screw in all of them. So if, even if I'm hooking onto two of them, I would still always screw them in and it just uh, gives a cleaner install. And then now, now you have your spacer, okay? And then now, like I was saying from the last video, I'll bring back that carry-all case. Uh, again, check out the last video to learn about uh, how to use this and why it's so useful as an apprentice electrician. And so now, again, if you are making quite long ones, I usually try to make them about this long, and I was able to store about two or three of them at all times. And I'm telling you, it just made you really, really good at finishing, all right? And I can just put those in there in case my plugs ever need to be longer. Uh, again, just quickly, so here was from the last video when I talked about anti-shorts. Uh, I would make sure to throw in uh, these L16s. These are just uh, single connectors. I'd make sure to have at least two or three of those at all times, many times even at one double, just in case you ever need it. Again, you always wanna think about weight. These things are heavy, right? This, even this bag is pretty heavy. So, you know, maybe just two of them I'd throw in there and then one double. And again, this is just all about in case you don't have them, then you can quickly just grab it and then always try to make sure to replace it after you've used it, okay? And then same with uh, these, we call them 4040s usually on a job site, or 4004s. Um, usually people call them 4040s though. And again, I just make sure to, have, and these are really light, right? So in other words, like I would make sure to stock up on these because these are really useful to have if you are doing a lot of residential or if you're in a condo or stuff like that, okay? All right, so that is this video about how to create a spacer. Again, shout out to Rob, uh, the master finisher. <laughs> he was really good at what he did. And then uh, that's it. So if you guys have any questions, again, make sure to leave a comment below or you guys can subscribe to, uh, my, to get my free book by going to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. Uh, thanks for checking out the video and I'll talk to you in the next one.